Thanks for coming out tonight. My name is Amanda Hadizadeh. I'm a senior economics major from Edmond, and I am this semester's team leader for the social entrepreneurship team. Um, so we are working with a company called Educate, which is a microfinance company based in Zimbabwe that offers short-term loans for education to Zimbabweans at home and abroad. Um, our team developed a growth plan for them, but I'll leave that for them to discuss. I'd like to start by thanking CCW staff for all of their support and encouragement, as well as our incredible inventor, Terrence Mugova, for sharing his company with us. I'd also like to thank our mentors, Tim Bickers and Tom Apel, for all of their wisdom about finance and capitalism. It helped us more than you know. <laughs> um, so this semester, when I learned we were working with a microfinance company, I underestimated three things. Firstly, I underestimated the complexity of microfinance institutions. Secondly, I underestimated what the backdrop of Sub-Saharan Africa would do to that complexity. And thirdly, I underestimated how much fun we would have figuring it all out. Um, from late night meetings where we ordered in Thai food to countless team meetings over dinners, we are definitely the most well-fed team that you'll see tonight. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you to these brilliant, hardworking interns, Alex, Maricela, and Sean. Thank you so much. Picture a boy growing up in Zimbabwe. He's just been accepted to a prestigious school when his parents break devastating news. They can't afford to pay his school fees at the start of term. He sits and watches as his mother cries, trying to find a way to make the money work. This is the reality for the 78% of Zimbabweans who are informally employed. They can't afford all of tuition at the start of term. And they don't qualify for standard bank loans because they have irregular employment. Furthermore, the only companies that do loan to them operate like loan sharks. The boy behind this story is real. His name is Terence Mugova, and he was inspired by his experience to found Educate, a microfinance company that offers loans to students in sub-Saharan Africa. Hi, I'm Alex Stubblefield. I'm a mathematics and economics junior from Kansas City, Missouri. I am Maricela Avila, a public relations senior from Oklahoma City. Hi, I'm Sean Christensen, an industrial and systems engineering junior from Dothan, Alabama. Our mentors are Tim Bickers and Tom Apel. Our team leader is Amanda Ahadizadeh and our fellow is Cassandra Rigsby. Our inventor is Terrence Mugova, and we are CCW's social entrepreneurship team, working to help develop a three-pronged growth plan for Educate. Educate's business model works to help expand education access for Zimbabwean students at home and abroad. They do this by offering two main types of loans. First, they offer student loans. In this case, Educate will pay a student's tuition to a school at the start of term. Over the course of term, that student's family will pay back the tuition to Educate. In addition, Educate also offers educator loans. In this case, Educate will offer a loan to a teacher for scholastic or personal needs. In exchange, Educate will deduct payments out of the teacher's monthly salary over the course of that term. But the crux of MOU's business model is the, or Educate's business model is the MOU, or Memorandum of Understanding. MOUs serve as the legal backbone and protect Educate as well as their clients and the schools that they partner with. Thus far, Educate's business model has been highly successful. They have 279 student loans, 174 educator loans this year, and are partnered with over 30 schools in two different countries. Educate's high-touch model also puts them at a competitive advantage. Specifically, when we look at Educate's default rate, we see that it's incredibly low, 1.5%. This is indicative of highly successful and also affordable loans that help expand people's education access. And the way that they're able to maintain this is through threefold approach. First, Educate prides itself on its communication. Second, Educate offers professional development opportunities, such as career guidance. And third, Educate has inclusive loan practices. When we compare Educate to its competitors, we see that Educate stacks up favorably. When it comes to communication, Educate only does business with schools that it has a formal agreement or MOU with. In contrast, Educate's competitors often don't sign these formal agreements, meaning that they don't keep up communication throughout the course of term. This has led to instances where students have paid off their loans to the loan companies. However, the loan companies have failed to inform the schools that the loans have been paid off. This has led schools to lock out students from the schoolyard unjustly believing that they hadn't paid off their loans. In addition, Educate offers debt counseling. 
This teaches families about financial responsibility, as well as teaches them financial literacy, so that in a hostile environment with loan sharks, they're better suited to navigate the world. Unfortunately, when Educate's competitors offer debt counseling, it often comes in the form of simply recouping payments from the family, regardless of where it leaves the family. Often it leaves them in a worse financial situation than when they began the loan. And finally, Educate has inclusive loan practices. Educate only requires a proof of income, which can come in the form of bank statements. However, Educate's competitors require a formal payslip from an officially licensed employer. This means that those 78% of Zimbabweans who need, loan most, needs, need loans most can't get them. Because Educate's best suited amongst its competitors, it's ready to capture a large and growing market due to the environmental conditions. The market for student loans among Zimbabweans is $381 million. It's comprised of three main segments. First, there's the students studying in Zimbabwe. Second, there are Zimbabwean educators. And third, there are the students from Zimbabwe who are studying abroad in South Africa. The reason why this market is ever growing is threefold. First, there's a high dropout rate between primary and secondary education. Specifically, there's a 40% dropout rate between these two levels because of the increased cost to attend secondary school. Also, there's a general fear of loan sharks which prevents people from getting loans within Zimbabwe. And finally, there's, the banks are reticent to loan out large sums of money to individuals because there are currently bank runs ongoing in Zimbabwe due to capital shortages. Thus, because Educate's well positioned to take advantage of a large and growing market, they're ready to expand. But they need to address three key issues first. Now, the first issue that they need to address is Educate has limited availability. They can only offer loans to students at schools that they signed an MOU with. Currently, Educate is partnered with 30 schools. However, there are a total of 3,875 schools that Educate could be partnered with. This means that Educate is only representing 8 tenths of 1% of the total number of schools that they could be partnered with. Also, Educate needs to do a better job of reaching students in its current schools. Currently, Educate is averaging nine students per school, but the average school population that Educate serves is 360 students per school. This means that Educate is only reaching 4.2% of the students that it can be reaching to help expand education access. And finally, Educate needs to address its capital issues. Currently, Educate is operating at capacity or near capacity every term, and they have $164,000 of working capital. To increase the number of loans that they offer, they need to increase their capital so that they can better address students. Currently, they've had to turn students away who qualify for loans simply because they can't afford to offer them. Thus, our team's work this semester has been developing a three-pronged action growth plan so that Educate can better address these issues and grow to serve more students. Our growth plan comes at the comes from doing rec having recommendations from over 40 individual public administrators at schools and talks with over 10 investors. The first, the first set of our recommendations is a method for Educate to acquire new partners. With our recommendations, by 2020, Educate could be able to acquire a total of 61 partners, which is a 103% increase from the total number of partners that they currently have. In addition, our second set of recommendations would be a set of marketing strategies to help Educate increase its presence at its current partner schools. With our recommendations, Educate could serve 8,000 students per year, which represents a tenfold increase from the business that they're currently doing. And finally, our third set of recommendations will help Educate identify and secure an investment partner. This investor will inject Educate with the capital it needs and allow Educate to do $13.2 million in loans by 2020, which would represent another 1,000% increase for Educate. Now they have given you a high-level overview of who Educate is and what our recommendations for Educate are, I'd like to invite Maricela to detail what these first two recommendations would look like. Thanks, Alex. Educate has the capacity to double the number of partnerships it has. This map shows the current representation of Educate current partners. If we take a closer look, Educate has 30 partners within Bulawayo, Harare, and South Africa. It has the capacity to double those partnerships by 2012. How will Educate achieve this? First, by targeting the Association of Trust Schools and pitching Educate to the principals. The Association of Trust Schools is the lar largest organization of private primary and secondary institutions in Zimbabwe, with 66 member schools, of which nine have partnerships with Educate, as well as uh, the, mar the market profile, ideal market profile that we have identified through our market research. Further, with, within our research, we conducted 20, 20 conversations with 
principals from this ATS schools. And they were a key role in our contacts because they have the authority to sign MOUs. Taking this in mind, 14 of them stated that they had, they had an interest in learning more about a microfinancing company with Educate's uh, description. Apart from this, Educate can continue on to grow into its South African market by targeting the, uh, the Independent School Association of Southern Africa. And to do so, it can pitch to seven additional schools in, in, in South Africa, more, more so in the Cape Town area, an area that is economically stable as well as politically. We have identified the seven schools of ISASA through our market profile and, 60, and prioritized them over 60 other schools. Now that I told you about the opportunistic markets Educate has and how it can reach them, I'll tell you how Educate can increase the number of schools and the number of schools it serves and the number of students it serves within each school. Educate has the capacity to serve 60 students per school. That is six times more than the average of nine, school, of nine students it serves per partner school. How will it accomplish this? By taking two main goals in mind. The first one is to increase the digital presence. It can do so by increasing its search engine optimization. In our conversation with these 20 principals, four of them stated that they had no idea about microfinancing education loans. If we were to ask them to Google Educate, Educate would practically be non-existent. That is a huge opportunity lost. Next, Educate can implement a better social media strategy and advertising. Of the uh, calls we made, 80% of them were unaware about Educate. Through Facebook, a general ad uh, targeting both Harare and Bulawayo, the two main cities, it can give Educate 7,000 daily views of this ad and can dramatically decrease that unawareness level. Finally, Educate can have joint website publicity with its partner schools. When we had those conversations with schools, 21% of them referred us to their website. This adds a level of trust for parents and students, as well as a extra level of exposure for Educate. And finally, Educate can focus in another goal, building its word of mouth, and it can do so by administering a survey that we have, uh, we ha that we have created, that will allow to uh, that will allow Educate to know where students are finding the information about Educate and how they can improve those points of contact. Lastly, Educate can engage in brand ambassadors, which will allow them to have another point of contact at each school, and possibly double the number of students they are serving at their partner schools. Now that I've told you about how Educate can grow and, how, and the opportunistic markets that Educate can uh, take advantage of, I'll pass it on to Sean to tell you more about the financial aspect of this growth and how investors play a key role. Thanks, Marcella. Based on these new partnerships and increased presence in schools, we plotted what this growth might look like over the next few years. And using these recommendations, Educate can see a 10 times increase in the number of loans at a time that it currently provides. Here's a breakdown of that timeline. As you can see, Educate is currently serving just under 300 loans at a time. Over the next two years, Educate would partner with an additional 18 ATS schools and two universities in Cape Town, which we prioritize based on our school profile. And through implementation of the marketing plan, it would be able to serve an average of around 10% of students in the primary and secondary schools. Two years after that, it would partner with additional uh, schools and universities to bring that number to total its current number of partners. And through further implementation of the marketing plan, that average of 10% would increase to Terrence's goal of 20%. After that, we recommend that Educate taper its growth, which we'll talk about more in the investment plan. But during these times, Educate would be providing over 3,800 loans at a time. Now to make this growth financially possible, Educate needs to form a long-term partnership with an investor. We investigated Educate's finances incorporating this growth to determine exactly how much capital Educate would need and when. The red bars indicate the cumulative amount of capital that Educate would need from investors to make this growth possible, with the maximum being $1.3 million. And we're recommending that this funding come in the form of a loan. While we explored other types of funding, such as equity or lump sum debt, this incremental funding solution would minimize the amount of dead or unused capital and therefore interest payments on the loan. 
and through the tapered growth, you can see that Educate would be able to repay this loan sustainably. Next, we looked at investors who would be able to provide this type of funding to Educate. We created an investor profile to narrow down the list of investors to ones that are socially focused and able to provide a loan at this size and time period. After looking at 30 organizations and speaking to 10, we identified, it, we identified three organizations that are interested in potentially working with Educate. For example, I spoke with Max, a partner at Impact Amplifier, and he was very excited about the potential to work with a company focused on education, and it works well because Impact Amplifier has worked in Zimbabwe before. We have initiated the conversations with these uh, investors, and Terrence will continue them after the project. Next, we looked at what Educate could do to potentially um, match better with these investors. As a result, based on our conversations with other investors, we have recommended key standardized financial and impact metrics that Educate can monitor and communicate to these investors. We also created additional pitch materials that Educate can use to pitch to these investor groups. For example, we created a pitch deck that outlines everything from what makes Educate great, what the details of its growth plan are, and why an investor should invest in Educate. As a result of this growth, Educate will see huge profitability over the next few years, meaning they'll be able to provide millions of dollars in loans and serve thousands of students. In our initial conversations with Terrence at the beginning of the semester, he said that his end goal was to serve as many students as possible during his time with Educate. And we're confident that with these new partnerships, increased presence in schools, and financial support from investors, that Terrence will be able to make big strides toward achieving that goal. Over the next few months, Parents can begin forming relationships with schools, implementing the marketing plan, and forging new partnerships with investors. We are very excited to have worked with Educate over the course of the last few months to help develop a plan that will allow them to serve thousands of students. And our team is very excited to announce that we will be traveling to Zimbabwe in January to help implement and refine these recommendations. Thank you, and we'll now open the floor for questions. Sure. So the question is what type of capital this would be and how the risk is measured. So we are assuming that this would be a loan, um, incrementally of course, and the uh, interest on that loan would be 10% per annum, which is um, based on investors that we've spoken to and an estimate that we believe is conservative. Oh, sure. Sure. So the loans to the students have a 2 to 3% interest rate monthly. Um, which equates to like a 20 to 30 percent interest rate annually, but most of these loans, since they are for academic terms, are um, three months in length, so that's not entirely accurate. But does that answer your question? I'm sorry. Yes, so the question is why the amount of loans in the last few years was constant, yet profits were increasing. Much of that comes from the fact that in 2020 and 2021, um, in the model, he would be paying back the loan um, to uh, get rid of that $1.3 million in debt. Um, so, but the profitability, the profit margin does stay the same. Yes. Yes. So first we identified the current partners that Educate has. And then based on that, we identified the ideal organizations that could uh, give us more net a higher network to work with. And we identified ATS. <coughs> and uh, we basically uh, had data over the 66 schools uh, tuition wise, location, um, fees. That, that's how we identified it. Does that answer your question? Yes. Uh, so we had another uh, question come in from our Facebook live stream. Uh, this is from uh, CCW alum Holly Crocker. Uh, you talk a lot in your pitch about how uh, search engine optimization and social media presence will be key to expanding uh, your presence in schools. 
Uh, but do you have reason to believe that computer and internet access is common enough among the students who will be needing loans most for that future? Yes, so based on uh, conversations we had with uh, principals and also about reading in general the current state of Zimbabwe, we identified that currently Zimbabweans are finding it cheaper to find, uh, to buy Facebook uh, data plans and WhatsApp plans than actually buying an actual phone uh, plan. That means that Facebook is becoming the only uh, means of communication for them, which means a higher potential for advertising to them and uh, yeah, using Facebook. Yes. The question was how we thought about the the um, the content that could go onto the website and uh, the Facebook. Uh, yes, we have. The answer is yes, we have. Uh, the current web they have a website currently, but we're looking to uh, we are we have analyzed various websites in relation to the industry they're in, and making recommendations based on that. Uh, Facebook wise, we are giving them an editorial calendar which entitles a, basically the mock-up of, um, of a week's worth of content. And we have gathered that through analysis of other social media channels uh, in Zimbabwe and in the US. So we have time for one more question. 